This is going to be the largest landscape I've ever built from the Warhammer universe, and it's finally starting to take shape. Just look at this rampart. I mean, this just screams Imperial Palace on Terra. But today we're taking this board in a completely different direction. We've got some design flaws to fix, and we're finally leaving the safety of the palace walls because in the grim darkness of the 31st millennium, there is only war. My Imperial Palace on Terra is of course set during the Horus Heresy, which means it is absolutely under siege. And so far, we've made some good progress on the ramparts and walls that are holding the forces of the War Master at bay. And under the protection of their Aegis Void Shields, they are in pretty good condition. But in the city sector before the walls, it is time for some destruction. Back in December, we had a play with the new Civitas Imperialis Ruins kits and knocked up a few of the ruined city pieces and they are great little elements but we need the density and scale of the devastation to match the resolute might of the first section of walls that we made last week and as a reminder this is just the first section of the wall which will be about four times longer when we're done. Hey guys Lockie from the future here in this single video you are about to see this board triple in size and stay tuned to the end to see a massive section of the Imperial Palace fully painted, finished, and ready for gameplay. As I began planning this next step of the build, I poured over my two pieces of key reference, the stunning Siege of Terror artwork by Neil Roberts and the amazing Warhammer World centerpiece diorama, and I made a pretty stark realization. This trench is way too small. The reason the Warhammer World display has such presence is the tiered layers of battle, the fortified upper bastion, the long bridges over their trenches, and then the chaos and destruction in the plains before the fort. Fortress. Now I've been trying to capture the same vibe with my Imperial Palace, but because my trench is so skinny, you barely even really notice it. I kept it one road tile wide to try and conserve those plastic road tiles when making the bridges, and to make sure it doesn't take five turns just to span when you're playing, but it's time to throw that all out the window and make this trench the absolute best it can be. And it gives us the chance to make even more of a feature with extra points of interest in the Undercity, which is the lowest level of my three level Imperial Palace build. My first step was to knock up a second section of the primary bridge, which is pretty simply made from two straight road tiles cut down and glued side by side and then detailed with foam, trim and supports. And straight away, we have an amazing opportunity to jazz up the trench by creating a bridge support that goes in the center of this bridge span and continues down to the bottom of the trench. They say this is just a mind numbing mobile game, but I'm about to flip that narrative on its head. Watch as I delve into the intricacies that make Raid Shadow Legends a game for serious players. The biggest misconception of all, Raid has so much depth. With over 800 heroes, PvE, PvP, CVC, there is always something to do. Raid has an auto battle mode, which saves a ton of time on the grind, and it's cross-platform, so you can play it basically anywhere, running it in the background while working. Raid also has a lot of endgame players who are completely free to play. You can have a ton of fun playing free to play. 5 million monthly active users can't be wrong, and while Raid celebrates 5 years, they went crazy with the amount of giveaways for new players. So if you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? $100 worth of bonuses are available by downloading Raid only via my link in the description or by scanning my QR code, including the epic champion Lady Atessa, 500k silver, plus after reaching level 25, you'll get an additional 500k silver, epic skill tomes and potions, but that is not all. After downloading via my link using the festival promo code FESTIVAL5, you'll get another epic champion Tariel, 500k silver, and endless amounts of rewards. I wish I had gotten this when I started playing. Come and find me under the name Zorbazorp, join my clan Zorptrons, and we'll be legends together. So hit my link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. I started by extending a small section of bridge out from the gateway on the city side of the trench, using an off-cut piece of road tile and my usual foam trim and mounted it underneath the gate. Then I glued my double bridge span together for the top with a bunch of skewers and liquid nails and then once that was fully dry overnight I trimmed all of the foam details to get them lining up nicely and then filled in all of the gaps with some filler and acrylic putty. 
I also knocked up a small bridge to extend our second gangway using a thinner section of road tile with the same foam trim style and did a neat little test fit and then it was time to start exploring the big pillar support. I got a huge block of 70mm thick foam, marked it up and carved out a nice interesting kind of core structure and then gave that a texture with some large style bricks and cut an archway out of the base for our lower gangway to pass through. I mounted some details around the archway, a few foam pieces as well as some Sector Imperialis plastic kit details to keep that consistent with our archways in the trench walls. Then I pinned everything together and had a look at how my pillar would interact with the gangways below and it, uh, it wasn't working that well. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to account for the height of the bridge, and this is way too tall. I shortened the height of the bridge and mounted the pillar so the lower gangway would mesh nicely with the archway, and then made a few extra spans for that lower gangway to get it all working nicely, and built the lower section of the pillar out of another massive block of foam, joining it precisely with the piece above to continue that vertical form, fitting the center section of the gangway in just the right place to make those vertical lines of the stone trim out and the pillars continuous. I then went against all my hard work to keep everything modular for painting and just started gluing things together. It was really hard to get all of the bits kind of working in harmony without having them properly assembled and bonded and I was pouring with the rain at the time so I couldn't paint anything. So that will just have to be a, a trickier painting process down the track. The final detail was to continue the pillar details from the upper section of the main support down around the gangway and below. And once those were done, the piece just looks so much more cohesive. And even though this took me two full days to get this trench widening thing happening, it has become a real feature of the build. Absolutely the right decision. The wider span of the trench not only means, look, I fit in here now, way better for gameplay. The visuals are so much better. Gliding up over the trench, next we need to to move up to here. So these are the ruins that we just had a look at before and they're fantastic and I've just got heaps of spare pieces. So the next step is road tiles, ruins and some big custom pieces. The first step of our upper city is to finalize the road tile layout and that meant cutting up and modifying a bunch more of the tiles to keep our double lane highway extended down from the first bridge. But to keep our city layout super modular, I actually needed a second double lane highway to cross the first one to give us multiple spots for our future second gate to line up. With the streets roughly laid out, it was time to continue the Administratum City Planner roleplay, and after whacking down the few ruined buildings we'd already made back in December, I decided the easiest place to start for this ruined metropolis was two larger structures that represent the top of our elevator towers, allowing units to move down to our new bridges in the expanded trench. I had a play with ideas using the big elevator tower from up behind the battlements, and then got cracking building a custom floor tile that would have a port in the middle joining the roads to our elevator shaft. In the south side I opted for a corner piece with two access roads into the tower and for our northern tower I got just a single road tile leading into the shaft but attached it to part of our double lane highways to give us some really nice options for the placement of these elevator towers. Then to begin construction, I once again went back to some of the Sector Imperialis 40k ruins to keep tying the elevator architecture together and because they're a great building block for these larger structures. I glued together a bunch of these pieces to be our archways, this time getting to use some of the ruined pieces as nearly everything in this outer city is going to be completely trashed as it is beyond the protection of the Aegis Void Shields. These elevator towers will also be a hybrid of foam and plastic to keep blending the different styles and materials for our architecture and to save on that precious plastic crack. So I cut up a bunch of foam sheets and started carving in our stonework patterns and began to integrate our plastic archways. I got excited for the northern tower first, so I mounted our core structure down onto the floor tile with liquid nails for the foam and plastic glue for the archway, and then started snipping off a whole bunch of extra Civitas Imperialis wall tiles to start blending our plastic kits together, beginning with an upper platform above the archway, just like our first elevator tower in the upper city. 
On the eastern side, I made a smaller tower from the ground right up to the roof and then added a few pieces of chamfered foam trim to bling up the kind of boring rectangular foam walls. Then I grabbed some spare floor tiles and hacked that apart to be our broken foundation for the top of our tower and then hacked out a huge chunk of the foam walls to match our ruined plastic pieces. I jumped over to the southern tower and gathered up my ruined Sector Imperialis walls and floor tiles and began to build this structure, this time beginning with the plastic components, which I can just glue straight down onto the road tile, and then I built a foam shape around them. I then went through the full texture treatment, making sure I covered every single surface with detail, and then I glued it all together. Next, I used a huge mix of extra Sector Imperialis and Civitas buildings and ruins to start building up detail on top of this core structure. The top level got another layer of the plastic floor tiles and a custom foam trim, and then the core structure of this tower is done and it is time for the real detail work across both. Now, I smashed out a bunch more pieces and I was on a bit of a roll here with the southern tower, so I started adding some really cool outer structures, this time blending in the large Civitas walls with some incomplete spire details hard up against the foam wall to integrate these exterior details with some structures up on the rooftop to make the tower look like this big cohesive structure and not just random Warhammer kits glued onto a foam box. This basically involved putting down a lot of ruins of varying heights, trying to match the damage on the opposite side of the tower, but leaving enough intact walls to create some nice buttress accents to link the lower towers. And there we have elevator building number one, a really badass hybrid of plastic and foam. Now, the one thing that this first tower is missing is integration within the wider city complex. So for the next tower building, I knocked up some detailing on the rear, and then we set about making the final exterior tower on the western side. But this time, I put in a little broken walkway, which I'll be able to use to connect to a bunch of future city buildings. Uh-oh, Lockie's building walkways again. Tower two is now looking pretty good. Now it was time to start work on some of our normal city structures. The key with these large structures is to make an intact foundation out of the larger Civitas walls and then add the smaller ruined walls to the upper levels rather than taking those ruins all the way down to the ground level. This guy of course needed a cool ruined walkway as well to connect to our tower which I added at the very kind of upper levels of the structure with some upside down buttresses as supports. It's, it's almost like the only reason that these last few chunks of upper wall are left is because at the time of the blast that decimated this building they had the bridge supporting them although that itself has now fallen away in the center. This whole journey, I've been kind of struggling to get these really nice little plastic buildings looking good on this massive scale of the palace, but I've got about a third of the ruins on this part of the board finished, so it is time to get cracking. I have big news, thanks to all of my patrons and YouTube channel members, we finally have some scenery storage here at Zorbazorp HQ. Obviously we're going to need more racking as, you know, Minas Tirith Imperial Palace on the way, but there is finally a way to get my precious boards up off the ground. So a big thank you to everyone who has rallied behind me since the big scary announcement video, everyone who's joined Patreon or become a channel member or super chatted right here on YouTube. Just thank you so much, you guys are the best. It has been one year and two weeks to the day since we moved to New Zealand. And that whole time, funds were so tight, uh, we couldn't even afford to buy something as simple as shelving and storage to get my scenery up off the ground and out of piles. So it's uh, amazing to hit this sort of strange but kind of emotional milestone. If you want to keep the Zorp fight alive, you can become a channel member or super chat right here on YouTube or check out Patreon link down in the description. Thank you so much, guys. Up next, I grabbed the really small ruins that I'd already built and added a tall, intact lower floor, which added a bunch of presence and improved the implied density of that area of the city. And then I began a big journey to bang out a lot more large, detailed buildings. I won't waffle on about every single aspect as it's a lot of the same, but here are the highlights. First, I wanted a really imposing set of structures for the center of the board. So I created a pair of buildings joined by 
by two walkways that would go across one of the city streets. These two buildings had some unique floor plans and were quite tall, with the side of each building opposite the walkway blown out and heavily ruined. The layers of rubble and the shattered flooring terracing up the building to the walkways really add some much needed visual interest in this part of the board, but it did use a hell of a lot of pieces. So this density is really working. We need this all over the board, but we've got a little bit of a snag. This is all I have left of the ruin pieces, and I'm just not really sure how far that's gonna go. We have been churning through them. So for the rest of the board, I'm actually gonna build a little bit differently. For the remaining buildings, we're actually going to build from the top down, assembling all of those little ruined pieces into mini ruins, and then building out the base of those buildings underneath those ruins, so that I perfectly make use of every last piece of ruined wall. My first big job of ruins assembly resulted in about 10 mini structures of varying heights and layouts, and it still wasn't a congested enough city layout, so I knew I'd need to widen most of those footprints with intact lower levels, so I grabbed every single remaining tall Civitas wall tile and sorted them into my tubs and got crafting in a monster session of gluing and mapping out every single wall tile against each ruined topper to make the largest buildings that I could. I started off with some more conventional shapes, but this unique method of working backwards ended up creating some really interesting buildings, even a few extra walkways and some awesome intact balconies terrace up to blown out ruined upper levels. In the last video, we tried out a new format where we finished the board in chunks so that we can all get some completionist dopamine. And you guys really loved it. Thank you so much for all your comments and your super chats. It really meant a lot. And as a little reward for you guys, I haven't just primed the new section. Welcome to the first fully painted section of the Imperial Palace. Now, obviously, there is a lot more to add to this board and a lot has been done to this that you guys haven't seen yet. I'll show you that all in the next video, but now we can get an idea of where this build is going. And if you want even more of a sneak peek, there are some awesome photos over on an article on Warhammer Community, link down in the comments, so go and check that out. And if you think this board is big now, just you wait until you see the next video. I am going to need a bigger garage. <laughs> and don't forget to use my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses for new players with an epic champion.